there is a fantastic comic book being released by DC Comics at this moment. I haven't really talked about the human target much. I really only went into the Guy Gardner stuff. And it's one of those things where I don't want to recommend a comic book like this from a writer like Tom King because I know at the end he's going to pull the rug under now, out from underneath us and you're going to end up getting something far worse than you were expecting in the story. And that's the really bad thing about this because this human target comic book has so much going for it. There's a really cool, engaging, smart story being told here. But Tom King, he can't help himself from being... I, I guess Tom King, he's literally his greatest strength and his greatest weakness at the same time. He's got a really cool story going here, but he has to go take another shot at another character. This week, it's Martian Manhunter that's getting the Tom King treatment. A little low-key character assassination, similar to what happened to Mr. Terrific, similar to what happened to, to Guy Gardner. And some people will say, Wes, you're being, you're being overreactive. I hear you, Skip. I don't think I'm being overreactive, especially when you kind of go into the details of, of John Martian Manhunter. I know there's a lot of people out there who will say it's Black Label, it's Elseworlds. There are no Elseworlds. There, there are no stories that are out, in, out of continuity in the DC Omniverse. They have told us that. Everything happened. So the events that, that make John who he is happened. And what is being implied in this comic book about Martian Manhunter with a little bit of perspective is actually kind of gross. I understand that Tom King wants to get into the trauma that comic book superheroes experience and how that affects him. He got his chance to tell that story. He got to do Heroes in Crisis. It's the story that he wanted to do, and it was his greatest failing. It has put a permanent blemish on his reputation as a comic book creator, far greater than anything he did with Batman, far greater than anything he did with Mr. Miracle, far greater than anything he did with Adam Strange, far greater than anything he did with Rorschach. And those all had enormous flaws where he decided that he needed to go hunting for scalps, a.k.a. DC characters. But here you have an exceptional comic book. It's the best comic book Tom King has, has written, in my opinion, since he wrote that Swamp Thing winter special. If you haven't checked it out, go read that and you will see why, why Tom King is such a disappointment, particularly to me as someone who loves comic books, who loves DC comics, because there's so much potential he actually can write stories. I know people will compare him to Brian Michael Bettis. Oh, he's, he's like Brian Michael Bettis. He can't write. No, he's nothing like Brian Michael Bettis. Brian Michael Bettis can't write a story right now. He can't execute anything. Tom King executes what he wants to execute. And that's kind of his, his biggest problem. He can't do subtlety. Even when he's trying to do something somewhat low key, he actually executes it to, to such a level you can't ignore it because it's so out there. And you're like, yes, I understand exactly what you're saying because he's actually very good at communicating his ideas through his stories. That's probably one of the reasons that he has so many great comic book artists working with him because he does have a coherent idea and how he wants to execute it. Obviously, in The Human Target, we have phenomenal art. Greg Smallwood, the noir look and feel of this comic book is exceptional. And there's so much to like about it. But once again, he has to be Tom King. And this week, it's Martian Manhunter that's under Tom King's metaphorical scalpel for a little bit of character surgery. Take a little piece of that character out. We get this scene where he's in bed with fire, and they're talking. It turns out that Martian Manhunter has some kinks. Specifically, he likes to be hurt in bed. Specifically, it appears that he likes to be burnt while he's engaging in adult activities with his lady folks. And I can hear some people say, you know what? Everybody's got kinks, Wes. Wes, you got a kink. You're married to an Asian lady. That's your kink. You know, Tim's married to a white lady. That's his kink. There are some people that like to be burned in bed. But if you really get into the story of John Martian Manhunter, and this is kind of spelled out in that Martian Manhunter miniseries from J.M. DeMatteis, which is really good, by the way, if you want to go check it out. It kind of explains how Martian Manhunter became who he is and what happened to his family. There's this weird Martian virus, and I'm not even going to try to say the name because I don't I don't like the weird Martian names they do. John Johns is enough for me. But his wife and his daughter, he tried to save them, but they end up contracting it. And Martians are very afraid of fire in the DC Comics universe, and they essentially end up burning alive in front of him. So you could see why this weird sexual fetish that he has where he wants to be burnt in bed could come off as rather repugnant on the behalf of one Tom King in my opinion, but he doesn't really even stop there because that would have been very, very subtle. 
A lot of people wouldn't have noticed that. They probably haven't read that miniseries and aren't fully aware of Martian Manhunter's backstory. And yes, I understand there are people out there that know Martian Manhunter better than I do. And they have loved a lot with his backstory and what makes him who he is. But this is a part of it. They continue on with the story and there's going to be another rendezvous. And this is what his would-be lover has to say to him. Okay, tonight. But cut out the crying afterwards. Remember, you're a goddamn manhunter. So not only does he have a fetish with fire, which is kind of gross when you think about what happened to his wife and daughter, but now he's the sub to ice and he likes humiliation. And it just feels also, I don't know, Tom King. There's so much good going on in this comic book, and I am going to get to that here in a second, but you can't ignore this. If this was a one-time occurrence, you absolutely could, but it's every single time he does this. What did Martian Manhunter ever do to Tom King to where this illustration needs to even exist? Look at the humiliation on the face of the character. I feel bad for him, and I imagine that's what Greg Smallwood is trying to convey in the art. I imagine that's how Tom King wants you to feel about the character, but why? This is never going to be further explored as far as what this means to the, to the Martian Manhunter character. It's just meant to be shocking. But at this point, it's not shocking. It's par for the course. It's the same ass lazy writing trope that has held Tom King back for so long. It's not even funny. He will never rise and be the comic book writer and acknowledge for how good he actually is as long as he continuously has to take these weird shots at the DC Comics characters. Nobody needed to see this page. It adds nothing of substance to the story. As I already showed you, John already has a tremendous amount, amount of shape. You could certainly humiliate him by talking to him about what happened to his wife and daughter and how they died essentially right in front of him. You didn't have to go in there and throw this weird kink on the character that, quite frankly, Tom King doesn't have an ownership stake in, so it's really easy for him to go in here and do something like this, especially when it's never going to be further explored, and it just takes away from the overall quality of what is a fan-fucking-tastic comic book. There are some really cool things going on in here. If you're not familiar with Christopher Chance, the human target, he stands in for people as they're about to be assassinated. In this story, he has taken a poison that was intended for Lex Luthor, and to get to the bottom of it, he has to discover who was trying to kill Lex Luthor, you know, and obviously cure himself. And now we're starting to get some really cool origin information and backstory on Christopher Chance on why he would even want to do this job. And you get this really tragic scene of his father who's a drunk, who owes an outstanding debt to some loan sharks, and one of their thugs has come in to collect of what has happened. And Christopher is seeing his father beg for his life and grovel, and he feels so bad that he's humiliating himself. And when it's time for this assassin to kill his father, he jumps in the way. He's unable to do that. The, the gunman doesn't shoot until he's out of the way, and then he kills his father, and he dies in his arms. And that is why he wants to be the human target. That is compelling stuff. That really shines a light on what makes the character cool and what makes the mission very interesting. We also get a ton of backstory about how he came the human target and a lot of the training that he's been doing. There's a really neat tie-in in this comic book to Saturn Girl where it appears that I believe it's one of her relatives is training Christopher Chance how to block telepathic uh, attacks on his head. It's executed at an exceptionally high level. And the story moves between Christopher Chance and Martian Manhunter. And there's some really cool things being explored here. It's unfortunate that Tom King can't just get out of his own way and stop throwing these little humiliations, these little digs, these opportunities to kind of go out and destroy somebody else's character. Because there's something here that should be celebrated. There's something here. The quality of this comic book is exceptionally high. The art is fantastic. The storytelling is top-notch. There's a mystery that I am completely engaged in. I want to know who did this, and I want to see how he's going to unravel it. And there are so many cool moving parts, and the narrative is actually coming together. Tom King has had a problem with that lately. He's made his stories too complex. This time, he's executing it at like the highest level possible, and yet he keeps throwing these moments in where you have to take a dig at Guy Gardner and make him look like a chump. Now, I do believe that will get paid off. I imagine Ice is going to murder him. But this thing here that we see with Martian Manhunter that does nothing but distract from the story is never going to be paid off. It's just another chance for Tom King to humiliate a character. And that's too bad because Tom King has a winning comic book story here. But he's still his own worst enemy. And that's just, it looks like that's going to be the way it is for the foreseeable future.
if you're unaware of exactly what Tom King did to Guy Gardner in the human target, I did this video not too long ago kind of explaining it. It's really unfortunate that character assassination is one of Tom King's favorite writing tropes. And when you see this, if you're a Guy Gardner fan, you're going to be pissed. 